Well, you mentioned Chris Godwin. Let's let's go right to him next. He's at 81. You said you would take a chance on him. I think, you know, I was a little shocked to see the sticker price on him. We talked about Galladay on the last podcast. He's at 79 right above him. And then kind of Godwin, who are kind of in the same vein, I feel like right now, as, as players who are maybe on the rise. So, again, a little shocked, but this is pro- maybe the last time you're going to buy Godwin on a semi-reasonable price tag, question mark? Yeah, I, I remember a tweet coming out uh, a couple of months back from um, Brian McDowell saying, hey, Chris Godwin is such and such, and I believe it was in the hundreds or, or late 90s, and he was like, I guarantee he's moving up 30 spots, and sure enough, he did, and he was absolutely right. The thing about, like you said, we got Corey Coleman, we got Chris Godwin down here, we had Devontae Parker right Galladay. there. Galladay. The thing, the thing about like you, the sticker price on Chris Godwin right now, it looks high because that's where he started from in the back. And but because he was a second round rookie pick last year. But again, like look at what happened with Michael Thomas. He was nobody was picking Michael Thomas early in the draft picks, but he goes and plays with Drew Brees, blows up. He's a first round startup pick now. Like we don't really know about these young wide receivers until they get out there and start playing. And but but where you initially buy them, like the Corey Coleman's and the Devontae Parkers, they were up there in the second round, third round of startup picks. They haven't done anything on the NFL field, so they start to dwindle it back. And then you got the guys that start at the back, they get out there and do something and they start creeping up. But if they play with Drew Brees and catch a hundred balls, they go straight to the top. So, like Chris Godwin has Jay Wayne. That was his boy last year coming in, and we all liked him. I mean, who? How could you not like Chris Godwin after that? After that uh, bowl game, where he, he was just super hard in the paint for yeah, Chris Godwin absolutely. in the second round. If you listen to this show, you got him. Now, look, you got a solid asset. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah. No. But, uh, well, I'm just saying, like the the sticker price, it, it is a little bit. It looks steep, but again, because that's just comparing to where you remember seeing sure. him at. If he would have started out in, in a little bit higher in the 60s and 70s of a, of an ADP of a startup, and he would have just played a little bit at the end of the year and played good and stuck around, it wouldn't seem as bad. Well, it wasn't a, wasn't quite a favorable landing spot right off the rip because exactly. he was buried behind a couple of guys. But now, they like just we, signed to Sean, he, he had get, yeah, he had, yep. he he has now gotten on the field, and they're basically saying that they're having trouble keeping him off the field. Yep. And obviously, you got Humphreys over there who plays the slot, but he's probably maybe going to get out of the way here a little bit for some Godwin and and you know I. Well, overall, the numbers don't look spectacular. 34 receptions for 525 yards, just the one touchdown. But he he didn't have too many snaps. Um, like he, I think he played half the snaps that Mike Evans played, somewhere in like the 400s. Mike Evans had like almost 800 or something. I don't. I, I looked at it and I didn't write them down. But for all the reasons that we really liked him in 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 the coming out of college, are like the same reasons like. He showed you. He showed you what you liked stuff about him in the right NFL, on, right on the NFL, right. right on tape. Strong upper body helps him win contested. Helps him win in contested situations, which he's was got, was like the the holy grail about him, like the best right. contested catch guy ever. Yeah. And he's just like you said, it, he, it he proved that theory on the couple of plays sure. that you saw him on. I went back and watched some of the games because they started giving him more snaps uh, later in the year. Um, and you see you see the strong hands, both from a catching the ball perspective and from like jockeying for leverage with a cornerback. Like he's he can fight you off, and whether that's at the line of the scrimmage or whether it's you know, versus press coverage or whether it's at the top of a route, you saw him doing that. Um, he's got some yak ability. I think that's the, the, the score, his touchdown. He took, like, a screen to the house. Um, he can go up in the air and get it. Like, there were parts of the year that you saw him do all of this and perform on the field. Similar argument that we made for Corey Davis, where, like, the first couple games that he played, he really showed you a whole bunch of different things that, that made you right. feel good about right. what you thought felt about him before he saw him and then he confirmed a bunch of those feelings well like you said you mentioned it like the the total numbers for his year last year don't jump off the page but if you pull up his game log it's the tale of two cities over here like sure. the back half of that season is like oh we're about to use chris godwin i mean his numbers yeah. just jump off the page for we're not very rookie. good let's see what we got exactly right. and because yeah exactly in the beginning of the season the, the bucks were a completely different offense they tried a bunch of tight ends let's pound doug martin and deshaun watson stretch him deep that wasn't working and trying to different things they got the quarterback hurt like things fell off the rails and they were like bring in the young guy let's see what we got dude played great he's the opposite game log of like a cooper cup cooper cup comes right in there and he's just got steady numbers all year long mm. but sure you bring did. in but you bring in godwin at the end of the year it's the back half of the year and and he's looking real solid with some of these numbers left and a great taste in everyone's mouth week 17 you gotta crush the saints for 711 and a touchdown he was 
working that DB Crawley, number twenty. It yeah. wasn't Lattimore. Lattimore was over there with yeah. Uh, but Crawley Mike had Evans, a good year. Was and he was torching Crawley. Most Just, of these numbers come with Ritzy Fitzy throwing in the ball. Fitzpatrick, you know exactly. Yeah, so, and a lot of well, Winston was playing that that last game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's. True, but but true. I mean it was it was just so good to see and if you just look at the overall total it's not going to give you the right impression if you watch some of these games where he was getting work he looked great doing it yeah and I can I, understand why like looking at the ADP it looks a little alarming but like you said to lead it off Casey is this the last chance you have before maybe he before right. it's too expensive before it's before it's expensive money right so I mean I like I like Chris Godwin and uh, I'm ready I'll take him if I, I have to <clears throat> wherever I got to take him. I don't think you're going to get too many arguments from me if 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 I had a team and and it was around this this area and and I and I wanted to take a shot on on a younger guy who could possibly play dividends for me just kind of like we talked about Corey Coleman just a second ago and you mentioned Chris Godwin and I I was kind of indifferent but I I either one of those guys I'm okay with taking a shot on. Well, everybody knows that listen to us. I will I will give young receivers a hard time because it's hard for them to produce for my lineup and I'm not a big roster clogger fan but in it in a dynasty format you have to allow for some of those youngsters sometimes and in this scenario that you have to I will sign off on Chris Godwin at this ADP but you also have to understand that going into next year you got Mike Evans OJ Howard potentially still having Cameron break they got Deshaun Jackson who's asking to please get on the same page they might have some running back that can catch the ball. You might not be plugging in Chris Godwin in your starting lineup next year. Right at least away. The, you might not be. But and you know fair. what kind of you, – you are bringing in a solid asset who showed himself to be an NFL player at the end of the year, and he's got – uh, just a bet. He's got college tape to sure. back up right. what you are buying into. And, so and I the, don't mind buying him, but just know that you're not buying a right. guy – that you're going to plug right in versus you could buy somebody in this area that you could plug right in for production. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of what you, what you're weighing here. And that's maybe why the sticker price immediately shocked me when I saw him there because of that kind of reason, he's still slightly unproven. You liked what you saw in, in the game film spurts in, in spurts. there, kind of reconfirmed what you liked about, that him you liked about him. Right. Um, but to your, you know, to your point that you just mentioned with all those guys like D they brought him in because they were one of the lowest, you know, deep play teams in the league. Jameis is, was pretty inaccurate in his deep balls last year. Deshaun, through no fault of his own, couldn't get going last year. He was open plenty of times, and Jameis just missed him. Um, so, you know, it, like you said, it could be a little while before Godwin really works his way on. And, I mean, you say what you want about Humphreys, but Humphreys plays, hey, plays a role and is I a pretty him. decent slot receiver. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not rushing out to grab Humphreys by any means on any team, but, like, there's just certain guys on certain teams that play a role. Hunt Humphreys is a fantasy point spoiler because he'll take points from the guys you want to have in your lineup. Yeah. He's good. He's a good NFL player. He's not somebody you're trying to put in your lineup, but he's taking catches and points away from other people because he's solid. He's a solid player. Clemson guy. <laughs> Go Tigers. <laughs> but <laughs> the Bucks do have some decisions to make on, on your former Tiger there. He's a restricted free agent at the end of the, at, at coming into this year. So they're going to place a tender on him. I can't see anybody coming in and scooping him up. Um, you got Deshaun who can, they can get out of his contract of paying him like 11 million after this year and have zero, you know, money against the cap. And then Mike Evans in 2019 is a free agent. So, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't obviously I don't think he's going anywhere, but you know, if we want to play the, the speculation game, yeah. maybe they believe in Chris Godwin and, let Mike Evans walk, cut D Jacks, and revamp this whole thing around Godwin. <laughs> I, I mean, it's yeah. go that far. Yeah. Crazier yeah. things have happened. <laughs> well, we know we talked about it last off season how the Tampa Bay Bucks they they would actually run the ball and try to win football games. Something happened in 2017, and they were they went from like an even split on running and, and passing to the bottom of the league in rushing attempts and the number three team in passing attempts. Now so, the defense was terrible and they were behind in a lot of games well yeah I'm, I'm just gonna throw it out there because there's a lot of mouths to feed potentially there's a lot of mouths to feed over there and Jameis isn't exactly a prolific passer yet yeah but he will throw it and he'll sling it and so just gunslinger mentality exactly so they're you know a little wild yet though 600 attempts for the team not Jameis because he was hurt a couple games but third in the league in attempts they're yeah, they might they might air it out a little more. Well, I mean, this is could be again if last defense, chance. I, I, my, I don't I don't care about the Bucks defense for my fantasy team. I want the Bucks defense to be bad. I want to throw <laughs> it all over the place. Right? You know, well, you'd like a little more uh, 
controlled chaos from Jameis. <laughs> but yikes, that's a good term. If uh, controlled chaos. If I got to take a shot at Godwin at eighty one, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really have a problem doing so. Yeah. Just, to, just to wrap I'll, this thing up, I'll do it. Chris Godwin. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's take it to break we'll be back with more married to the game podcast for your pleasure 